Well, I had the very unhappy duty of uh, letting my manager, Davy Johnson, go. And I suppose, in a way, the very happy duty of replacing him with Buddy Harrelson. Meet the Mets, meet the Mets. Pitbull's Park and greet the Mets. Hot dog, green grass, all I say. Guaranteed to have a heck of a day. Welcome to Mets Extra. I'm Howie Rose. Tonight, the New York Mets play the Cincinnati Reds at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. As you know, the Mets will have a new manager when they take the field tonight. Bud Harrelson has replaced Davey Johnson, and so the inevitable has happened. After six and a quarter years, the winningest manager in Mets history has been fired. And it really was inevitable, too. As we've discussed nightly on Mets Extra, Davey had lost a great deal of his grasp on this team. The communications problem that had plagued him throughout his managerial tenure had intensified as the players who were able to provide leadership departed. So, finally, it's over. And the Mets enter the era of Bud Harrelson. Now, Buddy's a hands-on guy and an excellent teacher. He was an aggressive player, and ironically, the type of player the Mets could use now at the top of their batting order. He won't be afraid to call a player into his office and deliver bad news. Davey couldn't do that, or at least he generally wouldn't. Buddy's style of play should prove more daring, more aggressive, and more creative than Davey's. But remember, he's limited in the type of team he inherits. He still needs a catcher. Davey did, and Buddy does. He still has to resolve the starting pitcher's disharmony. Most important, Bud Harrelson has to establish himself as the absolute boss of that locker room. He's been here almost as long as Davey Johnson was. Let's see if that's possible. And a personal note on Davey Johnson. In 1987, when we started Mets Extra, he was suspicious of me, suspicious of my motives and what our show aimed to achieve. And I'll tell you, for the first half of that 1987 th uh, season, things were pretty tense. But certainly by the following season, he became comfortable with the show and with me and delivered some outstanding information to us, albeit in monotone sometimes. Now, I knew a little bit about baseball when I first met him, but today I feel a lot more enlightened to the subtleties and intricacies of the sport and of managing, too. I'll never forget him for that, and I wish Davey Johnson the very best. Who knows? We may see him in the Bronx pretty soon. Now, Bud Harrelson, the new Mets manager, met the press just moments ago. I guess I'm supposed to say something. Uh, obviously, today I was... Uh very unprepared for what I thought was maybe just a little chat about the organization uh, this morning. And uh, uh, like Davey, when I saw Frank this morning, who was not supposed to be in town, uh, I knew that something may be happening. And uh, it's to my uh, benefit that uh, they decided uh, to ask me to be the manager, which I promptly accepted. Um, I was also a little saddened for Davey, who has been a uh, close friend, uh, gave me an opportunity to come back to New York where I live and to work and to be his third base coach and then to be his bench coach and then to be his third base coach again this year. Um, I think that showed that I was willing for this organization uh, to help in any capacity which would uh, be best for the organization. and it's been the judgment of this organization, I guess, within the last couple of days to decide to uh, allow me to run the ball club. Uh, I've just had a meeting with the players, and um, it's, you're probably wondering what, what I'm going to do to make things a little different, and uh, we just rediscussed the rules that have been in existence since 1984, which uh, the players... Uh, I think uh, really didn't pay attention to and uh, we've re-evaluated uh, those rules and I think they totally agree, agree that uh, they have been abusing the set down rules for, for a while and that uh, they feel that uh, it is in the best interest of the ball club uh, to start living up to those, those uh, rules. So other than that, uh, the lineup is the same tonight as it was last night with the same pitcher, Bob Ojeda. And uh, the, the lineup will be the same, which was posted last night. And that lineup features Jeffries at second, followed by Miller in center, Tuffle at third, McReynolds in left, Strawberry in right, Marshall at first, Elster at short, Hundley behind the plate, and Bob Ojeda on the mound. That's your Mets lineup for tonight. As Buddy said, the same one that Davey Johnson filled out on the lineup card last night in what was to be his final uh, insertion into a Mets lineup card 
Davy Johnson fired Bud Harrelson, the new manager of the New York Mets. The announcement, the official announcement, was made a little while ago by General Manager Frank Cashin. We'll let you hear those comments, and then we'll speak to Frank live at about 7.05. You're listening to Mets Extra. I'm Howie Rose. Still to come, of course, this date in Mets history and a check of the Mets minor leagues. Bob Murphy, who will speak to Buddy Harrelson on the Mets pregame show. That will be at 7.15. We'll also set the scene from Riverfront with Batter Up. When we get back, we'll hear what Frank Cashin had to say about the firing of Davey Johnson. And again, we'll talk to Frank live at 7.05. As Mets Extra continues here on The Fan. You are listening to Howie Rose and Mets Extra here on The Fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. Sports Radio 66, WFAN. Although we had the first word that Davey Johnson was going to be fired as far back as about noontime this afternoon, the Mets insisted that the official announcement would not be made until 5.30. And so finally, at about 5.30 this afternoon, in the bowels of Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Mets general manager Frank Cashin met the press and made it official. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this afternoon I had the very unhappy duty of uh, letting my manager, Davey Johnson, go. And I suppose, in a way, the very happy duty of replacing him with Buddy Harrelson. Uh, before talking about Buddy, I have to tell you that I am uh, not used to, have very little experience in letting managers go, and particularly in mid-season. Uh, David Johnson uh, has been the most successful manager in the history of the Met franchise, of anybody who has managed over... A thousand games in the major leagues. His win-loss record stays up there right with the best of them. Uh, during his uh, juncture here with the New York Mets, we have never finished less than second in the National League race. And I have to tell you that uh, when you let a manager go, uh, at least I feel like uh, he shouldn't bear all the blame. Part of the blame is certainly mine as a general manager. And part of the blame has to do with the organization, and part of the blame has to do with the team. Uh, Davey was great when I talked to him. Uh, he was uh, understanding. Uh, we, are, we are old friends and old acquaintances, and I think we shall remain friends and remain acquaintances. If I had to let Davey go, and I had made the judgment that the time had come for us to do exactly that, it was great to have somebody of Buddy Harrelson's strike within our own organization to be able to take over. Uh, Buddy Harrelson has been in a Met uniform for almost two decades. He played 13 years with the ball club as the shortstop. The great teams that the New York Mets had in the 60s and the early 70s. He later went on to play three more seasons in the major leagues and he has coached with the club for the past uh, six years. Um, Buddy Harrelson has managed for us in the minor leagues at the lower levels. He has certainly always been one of Davy's right-hand persons with this ball club, and I think that he is eminently qualified to take over the New York Mets and to lead them on, hopefully, to the Eastern Division pennant. I have... Uh, talked to Buddy, naturally, talked to Davey, I've talked to the coaches, and I have just finished talking with the ball players. Um, I have told the ball players that I still feel that we can win this thing. Uh, we talked a little bit about underachieving, we talked a little bit about fire in the belly, and we talked about some other things, and principally we talked about trying to refocus this team on winning because winning is what it is all about. Those were the comments of Frank Cashin made at the press conference a little more than an hour ago at which he officially announced that Davey Johnson had been fired as Mets manager replaced by Bud Harrelson. And we'll talk to Frank in depth in just about 15 minutes or so right after the update with John Clossy at 7 o'clock. Still to come, check of the roads, the Mets minor league report, and our Mets Extra trivia question. I'm Howie Rose, you're listening to Mets Extra as the Mets and Reds get sent to open the Bud Harrelson era at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati.
You're listening to Howie Rose and Mets Extra here on The Fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. Let's go down to New Ones and see what's happening. Wait a minute, that's my line. Hi, guys. Hello, Bill. Come to see what's new in the 1994s, I suppose. Well, why don't you show us what you've got on the line? Well, we have the Omen Thunderbird. It's a beauty. And, of course, we have the Escort here and the Tempo, a Taurus Probe. And we bring any special rebates this month? Up to $1,500 on selected models. What about financing? Low, low financing to qualified buyers. What about prices? You won't find them lower. Because New Ones sells sports for less. Hey, that's my line. Great prices, great rebates, great financing. Financing. Now that's a great triple play. Do all players talk only in baseball terms? I don't know. Let's quit talking and take Ron for a test drive in the shiny new Explorer. Uh, Bill, before we go out, don't you think we ought to end the commercial? Nah, let's let Ron do it. Don't let anyone throw you a curve. When you want a new car, see Bill Cords at New and Space Shore Ford. You won't balk at their prices because New and sells Fords for less. All right, that's enough. Next thing you know, he'll be asking for my job. New and Space Shore Ford, 219 West Main Street, Bay Shore. <laughs> You're listening to Mets Extra. I'm Howie Rose. It's 10 minutes before 7. The roads are a mess. We'll be back with more on the firing of Davey Johnson, the hiring of Bud Harrelson. Frank Cashin joins us in about 15 minutes. But here's the fan highway patrol and Christina Lay. Howie, we have some advice from Jay O'Brien. Don't use the battery tunnel. If you're heading outbound, only two lanes are open instead of the usual three. And as a result, West Street backed up all the way from Canal. Doing two things my mother told me never to do, stand out in the rain and playing in traffic from West Street. I'm Jay O'Brien. Thanks a lot, Jay. Up at the Gowanus, a tractor-trailer accident at Industry City has traffic tied up in that vicinity. Eastbound Belt packed through Flatbush Avenue. Left lane flooding the problem there. Northbound on the Palisades Parkway, you're packed off the George through Exit 1. That's due to an accident, and only one lane is open there. Also in New Jersey, northbound on the Turnpike's Western Spur. The ramp to 15W is closed due to a jackknife tractor trailer. Southbound Eastern and Western Spurs are both heavy down through Interchange 14. Outbound Holland and Lincoln, about a 20-minute delay. Inbound 30. Inbound at the George, about a 10-minute wait. This report sponsored by Nutrisystem. Nutrisystem is a safe, quick, and easy way to lose weight. Let Nutrisystem work wonders on your body. Don't wait one more day. Call Nutrisystem today. Just dial 1-800-321-SIN. We'll update traffic and transit conditions again at 704 with Mike Weinstein. I'm Christina Lang for the Fan Highway Patrol. Hey, Mitts and Yankees fans, here's sweet news. Kids can win a dream day as a milk dud celebrity bat boy or bat girl. What's a dream day? Kids 6 to 16 can win four tickets to a Mets or Yankees game, a jersey, a bat, a baseball, and best of all, go on field for a photo with a Mets or Yankee player. That's a dream day. Great. What's the Milk Duds connection? Milk Duds Candy has teamed with the Mets and Yankees to provide this special opportunity. Entry details in stores where Milk Duds Candy is sold. Anything else? See the insert in your Sunday paper June 10th. Hey! Where are you running? To find some milk duds, enter the sweepstakes, and dream! No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited. Winners do not perform bat boy duties. Sweet news, baseball fans. Check out this week's Major League lineup at Genevieve's and win a chance at a dream day as a celebrity bat boy or bat girl with the Mets or Yankees. The lineup includes milk duds, the pleasure that can't be rushed, Jolly Rancher Candy delivers intense, long-lasting, real fruit flavor and chuckles. Even the name says fun. Sweeten up your summer and score a triple play of savings at Genevieve, a drugstore and a whole lot more. Hello. Lois, guess what? Oh, hi, Shirley. There I was at Dunkin' Donuts trying to decide on one of those sandwiches. Shirley, you know what time it is. And they tell me I'll get six free donuts when I buy a sandwich, so I think, Cheryl, Cheryl. why not get them all? Roast beef and cheese, ham and cheese, Cheryl. all nine kinds of sandwiches made on those new rolls, because nine times six free donuts is 54 free donuts, right? Cheryl. And then I think, why not buy 1,000 sandwiches and get 6,000 donuts? Cheryl. And hey, who's to stop? me from getting 10,000 sandwiches and 60,000 donuts. Tell me what's the point of this call. Well, I just thought I'd drop by with some Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, well, that's very kind. I know. Wait a minute. How many donuts? 23,000. Oh, please. Buy any sandwich made with our new roll and get six donuts free at participating shops through June 17th. <laughs> Rose, you're listening to Mets Extra, and make sure you're listening after the game, too, for the Marine Midland Clubhouse Report, brought to you by Marine Midland Bank, 
Let's work it out together. Once again, Frank Kesha, the general manager of the New York Mets, will join us live in about 10 minutes after the update at 7 o'clock with John Clossy. Our Mets minor league report is brought to you by Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. Tidewater beat Nashville 7-2 to last night. The Tide's now 25-22. and Brian Gibbons was the winning pitcher. Jackson Mets lost to Wichita 5-4. to Aguido Vasquez, the losing pitcher. Good night, though, for Al Jimenez, who went 3-4, for four, including a home run. Jackson Mets, after a bad start, now getting it together a little bit. They're within 5 of the 500 mark at 20-25. and 25. Alan Zinter, last year's number one draft pick, the catcher who's now playing at St. Lucie, led the St. Lucie Mets to a 10-2 to two win over St. Petersburg. Zinter was 3-4. for four. The St. Lucie Mets are 30-23. and 23. And the Columbia Mets made like the big boys last night. They were rained out against Savannah. Columbia 36 and 16. This date in Mets history is brought to you by The Wiz. Remember, for everything in home entertainment, nobody beats The Wiz. We'll take some artistic liberties with the this date portion of our Mets trivia question and generalize it to an extent because, and we'll make this kind of easy, the last time that a Mets manager was fired during the season, it was also on the Memorial Day weekend. Can you tell me the last Met manager to be fired during the season? And again, the hint, it happened during the Memorial Day weekend. Same time as we're at right now. Call me on the contest line with your guests at 212-955-WFAN. Our winner gets a free one-year subscription to Mets Inside Pitch, the official newspaper of the New York Mets. Bob Murphy has more from Riverfront Stadium with Banner Up. And then after the update with John Crossy at 7 o'clock, a chat with the man who pulled the trigger today, the general manager, Frank Cashin, who fired Davey Johnson and replaced him with Bud Harrelson as the manager of the New York Mets. Mets Extra continues with Bob Murphy and Batter Up right after this. The New York Mets have a new manager. Just about everybody in New York knows it by now. A man who has spent about 26 of, his, of the 29 years the Mets have been in the National League with the New York Mets, Buddy Harrelson. Buddy, the splendid shortstop on the 69 championship ball club. The shortstop on the 73 pennant winning ball club. He has been a minor league manager and a coach with the New York Mets since his playing days came to an end. He turned down tempting offers in the past to stay in New York, and now his patience has paid off. Buddy becomes the manager of the New York Mets, and everybody wishes him so well. Buddy will manage the remainder of this year on this new contract, and the contract calls also for next season. Back with more in just a moment. Schaefer is the one beer to have when it's time to have some fun. Honest flavor never ends with quality second to none. When you bring out the Schaefer, there is no doubt. Good times for everyone. Oh, Schaefer is the one beer to have when it's time to have some fun. Since 1842, only the finest ingredients have gone into every glass of Schaefer. That's why, for an honest value and an honest beer, there's only one Schaefer. When you bring up the Schaefer, there is no doubt. Good time for everyone. Oh, Schaefer is the one beer to have when it's time to have some fun. Schaefer is the one beer to have. Schaefer and Schaefer Light, F and M Schaefer Brewing Company, Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. What a hectic night at Riverfront Stadium for Buddy Harrelson, going from one press conference to another, from one interview to another, and in the meantime, trying to map out a game plan for here tonight. The Mets will be a little short-handed as far as the administration is concerned. Buddy becomes the manager. The dugout coach Doc Edwards is not with the ball club. He had to go home to upstate New York. His wife has been ill. So Greg Pavlik, who takes care of the bullpen, will come out of the bullpen and man the coaching lines. The Mets then will have two days off after the game here tonight and will not play again until Friday night when they get to Philadelphia. By the way, over the weekend in Philadelphia, against the Hot Phillies, the New York Mets will have Frank Viola pitching on Friday night, Doc Gooden on Saturday night, and Sid Fernandez on Sunday. The game tonight, exactly the same lineups as were presented last night before the game was rained out. That means Bobby Ojeda pitches for New York. Bobby Lifetime against the Reds is 3-2. and two. Tom Browning will be on the mound for the Reds. Browning's been pitching great baseball, but not getting any run support. His last start, he hurled nine shutout innings, and the game was lost in 16 innings by Cincinnati. But Browning is one of the real good ones. That's her flying home after the game tonight in Cincinnati. 
I'm Bob Murphy, and this is the Batter Up Show, brought to you by Schaefer and Schaefer Light, premium taste and priced right. The used cars he'd seen. Tim was now the proud owner of something much more, a new Chevrolet Cavalier VL. Tim had chosen the coupe in bright, screaming red. And for the longest time, he just sat there in the parking lot, in the bucket seat of his brand new Chevy, and let the new car smell wash all over him. Soon, Tim would twist the key and fire up the new fuel-injected 2.2-liter engine. He'd drive his brand new, bright red Cavalier VL out of the parking lot and down the street, and at the first corner, maybe downshift the five-speed and listen to the exhaust. But for right now, Tim was content to just sit there and enjoy. Chevrolet Cavalier VL Coupe. When it comes to value, nobody's winning like today's Chevrolet. FAN Sports Time 702. The Western Conference Finals continue tonight in the NBA as the Portland Trail Blazers host the Phoenix Suns in Game 5. That best of seven series, even at two games apiece. But Portland is 8-0 and at Memorial Coliseum in the playoffs this season, but won the uh, first two home games against Phoenix by a combined three points. Prices surged higher in light trading on Wall Street today. The industrials gained 49.57 to close at 2,870.49, surpassing the index previous high set just last Wednesday. Advancing issues outnumbered decliners by a margin of 11 to 4. Now the WFAN three-day weather forecast for tonight. Windy with rain, possibly heavy at times, ending overnight, a low of 50 to 55. Wednesday, partly cloudy, windy, and cool, a high in the mid-60s. Wednesday night, clear and cool, a low of 50. Thursday, sunny and warmer by afternoon, a high of 70 to 75. The current Central Park temperature, 59 degrees. And that's what's happening. I'm John Clossy, WFAN Sports. Our next report after the game here on Sports Radio 66, WFAN, the number one sports voice in New York. Now here's Mike Weinstein with the Fan Highway Patrol. Thank you, John. A lot of problems in Brooklyn. Also, getting to Brooklyn, if you're heading south, northbound on the BQE, real heavy up through McGinnis and Humboldt Streets. We have some flooding problems there. Southbound packed Brooklyn Bridge to the Gowanus. And the outbound Gowanus Expressway, subject to full openings and closings out by 45th to 48th Street. Very serious accident there with a the tractor trailer now getting cleared away. The problem's getting to Brooklyn, outbound at the Battery Tunnel. You'll find at least a half hour wait if you're heading down West Street. You're backed up past Canal. That's how bad that is. Had some earlier problems and only two lanes are open outbound instead of the usual three. Also more flooding problems as you head east on the Belt Parkway by Flatbush Avenue. Flooding continues northbound Henry Hudson Parkway up in the Bronx past of the Henry Hudson tolls up around the 240s, upper 240s. Left, right, center lanes is across the whole roadway and you're backed up into Manhattan. Also if you're coming off the outbound George Washington Bridge, do the northbound Palisades Interstate Parkway jam-packed through exit one accident leaving only one lane open. This report is brought to you by 9X Mobile Communications. The advantages of 9X cellular service come through loud and clear. With 9X, you can enjoy voicemail, personal traffic advice, and more. Call 9X to start enjoying these cellular advantages now. We'll update traffic and transit conditions again tomorrow with Eileen Moore Casey and Imus in the morning. I'm Mike Weinstein for the Fan Highway Patrol. The weather is getting hotter, and so is Macy's, with a whole new line of Panasonic products for your every need. From microwave ovens for your kitchen to VCRs and TVs for your entertainment. And if it's music you like, then listen up. They've got Panasonic home stereo systems and portable stereos. And for your home or office needs, they've got all the right stuff. Panasonic typewriters, word processors, phones, answering machines, and fax machines. And there are Panasonic camcorders. It's all waiting for you during Panasonic Week at Macy's. Don't miss it. Spring into action today. I'm Howie Rose. Sharp Electronics and the New York Mets may have a seat for you behind a microphone in the press box at Shea Stadium because 40 lucky winners of the Sharp Electronics Broadcaster of the Day contest will be calling the play-by-play -play for an inning of Mets baseball along with yours truly on tape. Enter at a participating Sharp dealer or call 1-800-8-SHARP-8 for an entry form. That's 1-800-8-SHARP-8. From sharp minds come sharp products. There's been a lot of talk about Chase Better Banking lately, and for good reason. It's not every day that a whole new approach to banking comes along. But Chase Better Banking isn't just better when it comes to everyday banking. It's better when it comes to money you won't touch for years, your retirement savings. Move your IRA to Chase or open a CD for at least $5,000. And when you sign up for Chase Better Banking, you'll receive benefits like no fee checking with interest, no ATM fees, bounce protection, and more. For a limited time, you'll even get bonus interest on CDs linked to Chase Better Banking. And Chase gives you a free Ernst & Young Kiplinger Retirement Planning Guide and videotape. After all, what a bank really cares about the customers it has today 
The least you can do is help them plan for the future. So call 1-800-86-CHASE or visit any Chase branch to find out more about becoming a customer from a bank that hasn't forgotten what that word means. Chase, the more you bank with us, the more you get for your money. Member FDIC. Qualifying balances apply. Seven oh seven on the fan. I'm Howie Rose. You're listening to Mets Extra. And in case somehow you've managed to miss the news up until now, the New York Mets have fired Davy Johnson as manager, replacing him with Bud Harrelson. And we're joined right now by the general manager of the New York Mets. Frank Cashin. And Frank, if you can just take us back chronologically to the point when your mind was absolutely made up that you had to make this move. When was that? I think I made up my mind on the West Coast trip, which we recently completed, that the time had come where I, we were going to have to make a change. I went back to New York, discussed it with Al Harrison and Joe McElvain, who are my first lieutenants, and uh, we... Uh, you know, we decided to make a change. What were the one or two elements that most precipitated the change in your mind? Uh, the the number one element was that I didn't see a lot of difference in the team's attitude from the, uh, you know, mid on last year uh, through the time up to today. Uh, well, can you kind of elaborate on attitude and, and define that for these purposes? Uh, I can uh, uh, define it to this point in time that I thought the team had lost its focus. Uh, the focus in baseball has got to be on winning ball games and coming to the ballpark in the best possible shape. Uh, that uh, to put all of your efforts into that game and to uh, therefore proceed to win the division and get into the, uh, the championship series and possibly the World Series. And uh, that's what I expect to do every year as long as I have the talent. Uh, I told the ball club when I talked to them that when you talk about talent in baseball, independent people, scouts from other organizations, say the team with the two, two teams are the most talented in baseball, are the Oakland Athletics and the New York Mets. Uh, we have been underachievers uh, for some period of time now. Uh, as I told the ball club, I feel that perhaps we have lost the fire in our bellies and that we have to refocus and to get back uh, into uh, into the thick of the race. Uh, we are about one solid week away from being a contender. Uh, I couldn't see the team making those moves. Uh, I felt we had to make the change, and we made it. Uh, let me say also that I don't absolve myself, the front office, and most of all, I don't absolve the ball players from all the blame. Uh, Davey takes the fall. Uh, that's the way it is in baseball. That's the way the ground rules are written. It's unfortunate in a way since we are all somewhat to blame. And I so uh, so described it to the ball players. Have you thought, despite what you just mentioned about the assessment of this talent from sources outside the organization, that perhaps even uh, you and Joe McElvain and, and the Mets hierarchy have overrated the talent and, and perhaps overestimated it to an extent? Uh, I, that, that could be so, but uh, in my own personal opinion, I don't agree with that. Uh, I know that uh, New York is a very harsh market. Uh, the fact that this ball club has won more games than any other team uh, in baseball over the six seasons, the past six seasons, uh, fact that we have never been worse than second over those six seasons is sometimes not quite enough for the New York market, and uh, and the cry is constantly for more, more, more. Uh, do I agree with that? Not always, but I think in this specific instance that we should do better than we are doing, and that is why we made the change. Now, the catching situation hasn't been stabilized yet. Jeffries and Miller have been forced to learn new positions at the major league level. The team has been poor defensively. I mean, how much uh, of the blame do you uh, do you care to claim responsibility for? Well, I will take responsibility for all the blame as long as you give me response, uh, you give me the credit for all the things that have gone before. Uh, you know, at any given time, uh, uh, last year our pitchers went down, uh, or uh, two years ago our pitching staff went down at the same time. Uh, last year, uh, Doc Gooden went down in mid-year. Uh, uh, you know, we had problems, and you're forever having problems in baseball. Uh, uh, the fact that Jeffries is learning a new position, I don't take as an excuse. I don't accept that at all. I don't accept it from the player. I don't accept it from the manager. Anybody who has played shortstop for that period of time should be able to play second base uh, once they learn to master the pivot, which is different. There's not a lot of difference in 
fielding a ground ball. Uh, and I submit that uh, Jeffries plays a pretty good second base. He's made five errors. Four of them were in the first seven days. I think uh, he is never going to perhaps be a golden glove second baseman. He will always be remembered, I think, in baseball for his offensive performances, but I submit that he is not the worst defensive player in, in the game. What do you expect that Buddy will be able to do that Davey couldn't? Does it get back to focus? I think it gets back to focus, to turning things around, to bring a new breath of air into the clubhouse, to uh, uh, to bring some new enthusiasm uh, into it, uh, to bring some new ideas, perhaps. Did you talk to anyone else before you hired Bud? Uh, I uh, came back from the West Coast. I essayed my options, what I had. I looked at, talked, or tried to uh, talk to some people within and without the organization, see if they had any interest in managing. Uh, looked at all those options, decided that Buddy was my my uh, best option, and therefore offered him the, the uh, job. And what will happen to the coaching staff now? Will you add a third base coach? And coaching will Buddy... staff is going to remain intact. Uh, we are looking for one more coach. Buddy has offered the job uh, today or late this afternoon to, to a person who is now evaluating it, and we probably have some answers within 24 hours. Is that from outside the organization? Uh, not really, no. Will he have absolute power to uh, bring in any new coaches next year? Uh, he will uh, not have absolute power. I don't believe that the manager has the sole right to name all of his own coaches. Uh, I think that's a joint decision that has to be made in the best interest of the organization. Frank, I appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Frank Cashin, the general manager of the New York Mets, who today fired Davey Johnson as manager, replacing him with Bud Harrelson, who's about 20 minutes away from making his major league managerial debut, at least on a regular basis. And isn't it ironic, the only city in which Bud was ever a villain during his major league career as the result of a Pete Rose fight becomes the city in which he manages his first game as the regular skipper of the Mets. By the way, congratulations to Alexander Aravalo, who knew that Joe Frazier was the last Met manager fired during the season. That happened Memorial Day weekend, 1977. Stay tuned for the pregame show with Bob Murphy. I'll see you after the game with more Mets Extra. Enjoy the ball game.